one of the things about snakes, and, and pythons are no different, is that snakes are often hard to find. And uh, one of the best ways to find snakes is to try and cover as much ground as you can when snakes are out and when they're active. And for most of the year, these snakes are active at night because during the daytime, it's just too hot down here. And uh, so if we drive the roads at night, we can cover a lot of ground in a relatively short amount of time and, and increase our probability of finding snakes. The biggest impact that pythons have is, is, is the fact that they're, they're large predators and, uh, and they, can, they can eat a number of, number of animals. They most uh, frequently eat birds and mammals and they've already been documented to eat uh, you know, species of special concern and, and uh, endangered species that uh, you know, are, are really um, species we're concerned about here in South Florida. And so um, the, the impact on endangered species is, is a real concern, but also just the impact on the ecosystem by, um, by them eating common species. For example, um, rabbits, raccoons, and possums now appear to be uh, very rare in Everglades National Park, and in the 1990s they were, they were relatively abundant. And whether that's due to the pythons or not, we don't know for sure, but uh, certainly it, it appears to be, be uh, correlated. And the impact of those species disappearing from the park, uh, or at least having their populations uh, reduced substantially, uh, is really unknown at this time. I've always been interested in amphibians and reptiles, and especially snakes. And so anytime you have the, the opportunity to study a, a really large snake, uh, you know, it, it, it is a lot of fun. Uh, although this is this is a real mess down here uh, because of because of the pythons, and uh, so so the other aspect of that is that this is really interesting just because you rarely get a chance to study the biological questions or to address biological questions related to um, the introduction of a species such as a python, which is a, a large, cold-blooded or ectothermic predator that uh, can occur in in very high densities. Most of our large predators occur in relatively low densities, things like panthers and bears. Uh, alligators are an exception. They occur in, in relatively high densities in certain places. But, uh, but these snakes have been introduced. Their, their, their populations have expanded rapidly, and, uh, and they've already become a, a relatively common snake within Everglades National Park. One of the things that we noticed uh, just, just recently is that over the years, uh, since 2005, that we've been driving the, the main park road looking for pythons, is that we find very few, uh, if any, raccoons, possums, and rabbits. Um, and going back and looking at data that was collected in the 1990s by park rangers, uh, they found road-killed possums, rabbits, and raccoons on a fairly frequent basis. But it appears that uh, we've, we've already had substantial population reductions in those three mid-sized mammals that correlates with the, the rapid increase of python populations since uh, 2000. One thing we want to do is kind of stagger the cars. We don't want to yeah. be like going, you know. There have been other studies that, you know, if you go outside the park, you know, north of the park or other areas uh, where pythons uh, at least are not as common or not present yet for, as, as far as we know, uh, you still find lots of raccoons and possums and, and those kinds of things. Oh, that's pretty. It's a Florida water snake. They're a, a cottonmouth mimic. So. There you go, buddy. Well, it's kind of been a slow night. We found a few snakes, corn snakes, some water snakes, and uh, that kind of thing, but, but no pythons tonight so far. Now, it's a beautiful night. We've got thunderstorms around, so lots of lightning and um, you know, lots of stars too, and uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can find another python. So it's a pretty pretty nice night to be out here. I don't want to sound too pessimistic. The pythons are going to be here long after we're here, yeah, or long after we're gone. And I guess my my hope is that we will uh, learn enough about about what has happened here with the Burmese pythons to uh, hopefully prevent uh, similar situations from occurring in the future, and uh, and. Also, we'll, we'll, through learning enough about their biology and, and uh, uh, ways that they might be vulnerable to control, we might be able to control their populations in certain situations. Uh, but in terms of, of widespread control across the landscape, um, it at least appears that pythons are here to stay.